Do you want to know how to use the four digit seven segment display? Well, in this video, I'll be showing you how to build a project where the Arduino counts all the way up to 9,099 with this four digit seven segment display. And so I'll be showing you the code and also how to connect this four digit seven segment display to the Arduino. So without further ado guys, let's get started. Okay, so now I wanna go ahead and first start this off by explaining how the four digit seven segment display works. So basically here we have multiple pins and this is kind of like the seven segment display by itself, not four digits. It works basically the same way. Of course there's some differences because well here we have four digits, not just one. But in this case, what we have is each pin right here like the B pin, it's connected to the B LED. And it's connected, this B pin is connected to every single B LED on each and every digit. So on for all the other ones. So for example, if we wanna make one, we go ahead and light up the B LED, which is the B pin right here. And then we do bright up the C LED, which is the C pin right here. Of course, these LEDs to bright up, you need to use resistors in between 200 ohms up to 470 ohms will work. And so that's how we can do that, and that will display the number. But how can we, for example, display 11 in this case, where these two digits have to both display 1? Well, what we do here is we go ahead and display 1 first on this display. Okay, so we provide D1, which is digit 1 right here, to negative power. Okay, and this pin provides negative power to this whole digit right here. At first, this is high. It's set to high. So... Even if we give B and C positive 5 volts, this display will not light up 1 until we turn D1 to low, given this whole display right here, negative power. And so that will light up 1. And then, really quickly, it's going to go ahead and turn this high, this pin, a D1 high, and then it's going to go and turn D2 low, given this display, negative power. And then it's going to light up the B LED and the C LED displaying one on this segment. And so we're gonna do this very quickly where your eyes can't even see that this LED is turning off and this one is turning on and so on. Each one of these digits have their own pin that will provide negative power to that whole entire digit. Like D4 will provide negative power to the digit four. D3 will provide negative power to, to the digit number three. D2 will provide negative power to the digit two display and of course, D1 will provide negative power to the entire digit 1 on the full digit display. So basically, that is how this works in a nutshell. So now we go ahead and set up a socket. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and set up the socket. So here is the 8-digit 7-segment display. And we'll go ahead and put it on the breadboard like that. And then we're going to go ahead and connect up all the resistors to the pins that are connected to each LED on these eight digits. Except we're not going to connect the DP pin, of course, because we're not going to be using that. Okay, so now there are all the resistors that are connected. And now we're going to go ahead and connect up all these resistors to their pins. Uh, that's the LEDs are supposed to could be connected to. So the first LED is the C LED on the eight segment display and that's could be connected to pin eight on the Arduino. And then the next LED on the eight segment display will be is the D LED and it will be connected to pin seven on the Arduino. And then the next LED is the E LED or the E pin on the 8 segment display and that's going to be connected to pin 6 on the Arduino. And the next pin will be the B pin which is connected to the B LED on the 8 segment display and this pin will be connected to pin 5 on the Arduino. And then the next pin is the A pin and this will be connected to pin 4 on the Arduino. And then the next pin is the F pin, which is connected to the F LED on the seven segment display. And this will be connected to pin three on the Arduino. And then the G pin, which is connected to the G LED on the seven segment display will be connected to pin two on the Arduino. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and connect up all the digit pins. So the first pin, D1, is going to be connected to pin 12 on the Arduino. And then the D2 pin right here will be connected to pin 11 on the Arduino. And then the D3 pin on the full digit display will be connected to pin 10 on the Arduino. And then the last pin, which is D4, will be connected to pin 9 on the Arduino. Okay, so now here's the code for the project. And the first thing we have here is we have an array called digits. This array will be holding 10 containers, which represents every single number. And inside these will be holding every single byte on which LED we need to turn on and off. And you can see it in here. We have 10 of these right here, 10 of each, representing 0 all the way up to 9. And then inside this, this is like what pins we need to turn on to display a zero. And to display zero, you have to turn on all of the LEDs, but one, the center one, and that is the G LED. And so basically, we just turn the G LED off, which is what zero means to turn low. And all the other ones, ones means to turn all the LEDs high. And so on for all of the other LEDs, like for one, we turn on C and then B. So as you can see, we just turn on those two LEDs and then we get one on the display and so on for all of the other numbers. Then down here, we also have segment pins. These are all the pins that we have connected to the seven segment display that help us display the numbers on these displays. And then we have the D pins. These are all the pin numbers that we have connected to the Arduino that have to do with the D pins. They're all put in order from D1 to D4. They have to be put in that order or your or the display will count up the, in the wrong direction. So that's important to do right here. And then we have nums full. This would be holding every single number that should be on which display. So at first, the first number in nums will be uh, whatever number is being stored in the first slot, slot zero. That number will be displayed on digit one. The second number will be displayed on digit two and so on for the others. And so then we have this variable right here. This is last mills. It's going to be an unsigned long. This is for the mills function that we're going to be using. If you don't understand the front mills function, I have a tutorial in the link below showing you how to use it. Uh, I'm not going to explain in detail what this is doing, but basically what this is, this variable is going to be doing is going to be holding the value mills was at when we incremented the number in right here in the nums. So then we'll go into the void setup and we have a full loop right here. And this full loop here, we're going to set up i and it's going to be equal to zero at first. And we're going to continue looping this full loop until zero is no longer less than seven. And every single time we loop the full loop, we're going to increment i. And then we come into this full loop and we do pin mode segment pin, which is the array that's holding all of our numbers of all pins that are connected to the LEDs on the four digit seven segment display and since i is incrementing every single time we're going to go through every single one of these numbers and set them to outputs because i is going to be equal to zero first and so we're going to go to the zero slot in the array and set up two and then we'll go to one slot in the array and we'll go and that would be three and so on for all the other numbers we'll set them all up with this pin mode so then we come into this full loop right here and this full loop is for setting up all the D pins right here. And so basically, there's only four. So, and so we're just going to keep on looping this full loop until I is no longer less than four. So that will set up all of the pins to outputs as well. So then we come in into the void loop and we do if mills minus last mills. This will give us how long we have been out of this statement because on the bottom of this statement right here, we make last mills equal to mills. So, we're going to know how long we've been out of this statement by subtracting mills from last mills. And if that number is greater than 1,000, which is one second, then come into this statement. So if we've been out of this statement for one second, then we'll come into this statement and do if nums zero, which is for the zero slots, which is in this case, the first number, which is the first digit, is less than nine, then we can come into this statement. Because if it's nine, then we don't need to come to this statement because we can't increment a higher number. We can't increment to 10 because the one digit can't display 10. 
it can only display the maximum number of 9. So if it's true, then it's going to increment, but if it's false and it's equal to 9, then we're going to do come to this else statement, and we're going to say if nums1, which is for the next digit, is less than 9, then increment that, and also set the previous one right here, num0, set that back to 0 because we have incremented this one. But if this is also false as well, then that means this is equal to 9 as well, and we'll come here and do the exact same thing. We're going to increment nums2 right down here if this statement is true and it's less than 9. But if it's not, then we'll come here and we're going to see if this is true, nums3, which is the last digit on the full digit display, and see if that's less than 9. And if it is, then we're going to set them all to 0, and we're going to increment nums3. But if this is also false as well, then we want to come into this else statement and set them all back to zero. Because once this display reaches its maximum number that it can't display anymore, then we will just reset the whole entire display all back to zero and it will start back up to counting back over again. And every single time we come to this statement, as I said, we do last millis equals to millis to know how long we have been out of this statement so that we increment it every single second. And so then we come into this part. So basically what we're doing here is we have a full loop again, and we make j equal to zero at first. So at first, right when we come into this full loop, j is going to be equal to zero. And we're going to continue looping this full loop until j is no longer less than or equal to four. That means j has to be equal to five to no longer come into this full loop. And every single time we loop this full loop, j will be incremented. So what we do first is we turn all of these dpins high, which means that they're no longer connected to negative power. That means all of these LEDs on these displays will be turned off. And we're going to turn on, which is turning it low, giving it negative power so that the LEDs to this digit that we are currently at brights up. And that depends on J. So J will choose that because it will go through every single item through the dpins, which all, all the digital numbers that are connected to these dpins and set each one to low individually. It's going to do this very quickly where you won't be even able to see that any of them are turning off. And so then we come to this full loop and this will display the number on the digit that we have chosen up here. Okay, and so basically we set i equal to zero and we'll continue looping this full loop until i is no longer less than 7. And every single time we're going to loop this full loop, we're going to increment i. So then we come into this full loop and we do digits, segment pins. So this is going to go through every single segment pin, one at a time. And it's going to see what it has to do with them. If it needs to turn them low, turn them high, depending on what this right here does. So then we do digits, which is this array right here which hold the zeros and the ones in order based on how we're going to light up the LEDs on the segment display. So basically what we do here is we do nums, which holds the number that we want to display on the specific digit that we are at. So for example, J is holding the, the digit that we are calling at. If it's digit 1, which is in this case 0 because we start by counting in here well, by 0 all the way up to 3. And so basically, it's going to choose that, and it's going to say, okay, let's say, for example, we're on digit 3. And we want to display the number that we are going to put out on digit 3. This will give us what number we want to put out on digit 3. And let's say it's like 1, for example. Then it's going to put 1 right here. So we're going to go to the 1 slot, number 1. And that's going to be 1, the actual number 1, since we are actually using 0 to count with as well. So it's going to come here to this container and it's going to display whatever number this is which in this case is one and then this i right here which is responsible to go through this segment display so in this case for one only pins would be pin eight and pin five would be turned high as you can see the same with the pattern up here and we will light up each and every number that way and then we go ahead and delay full seconds Sometimes this can be a little bit quicker. If you see the blinking still, you can turn it down a little bit, maybe three or two. Basically, that is the code. And so now we'll go ahead and see our project in action. Okay, so now here is the project. And as you can see, the, eight, the four digit display is counting up as we go on. It's seven, eight, then nine, and then 10, and it continues going up. 
Now for me, I can't see that it's blinking consistently very quickly. It's, the LEDs are turning off. I can't see it, but on the camera, you can surprisingly. So maybe that delay that is full will have to be sped up to like three or maybe two for it to be impossible for even the camera to see. But in the naked eye, I cannot see that it's blinking very quickly. And so basically, that is the project and this will count all the way up to 9,099 and then it will reset. So basically guys, if you like this video, consider giving this video a like. Also comment down below if you have any questions and consider subscribing if you want to see any more content like this. Thank you everyone. Have a great day. Bye.